Hey guys, I typically don't make response videos, but there was a video on YouTube that I saw recently that really hit home to me, and I just wanted to kind of talk about some of the points that, uh, that, the, that the guy brought up in the video. Uh, the YouTube channel was uh, God, Family, and Guns. Um, he's a YouTuber of the channel that's like 10 times bigger than mine. Um, he was talking about um, his top five reasons for why he's not going to gun shows anymore. So we're gonna take a look at the top five reasons I won't be going to gun shows anymore. I don't agree with a lot of the points that he was making, so I wanted to kind of uh, address some of those points in this video, kind of talk through some of them. Uh, this is nothing personal about the guy. I think me and him have way more in common than we have, like, not in common. This isn't personal or anything. Uh, in fact, I'd love to have a, have a beer with the guy. Uh, but I just wanted to address some of the points that he was making in the video and, uh, and hear what you guys think about it, uh, because this is kind of... Like an kind of a hot ongoing issue that's going on right now in the gun community. Number one, price gouging. Now, a lot of the times when I hear people uh, talk about you know price gouging, especially when it comes to guns and ammo right now, um, they're most of the time they're just complaining about the current market value of ammo, which has just really gone through the roof. It's probably tripled from just like a year ago. Uh, it's pretty insane. I hate it. I'm not trying to defend. You know the current prices or why that is i'm just simply going to talk about the economics behind you know like price gouging um, so pretty much what you have with price gouging uh, and there's the legal definition of it and there's like the the webster definition of it so like the legal definition of it has to do with a little bit more of like if there's a hurricane in florida you know hotels in florida aren't allowed to charge more per room because you know, that would be taking advantage of people that, that need room. So there's that sort of legal definition of it. And then there's what people kind of think it means, which is just like people charging unfair prices for stuff. But the thing with price gouging is you don't have to buy it. Nobody, when you go to a show or a store, you know, unless it's just something absolutely vital, you, know, you don't have to buy it, especially at a gun show. There's nothing at a gun show that you absolutely need more than likely. Um, so there, there, there's no real price gouging because you don't have to buy it. If the price of something is too high, people just don't buy it, and then demand goes down, and then the price goes down. That's just the way supply and demand works. So you pretty much have two choices when it comes to like price gouging at gun shows, right? You either have vendors that are going to be selling ammo at a year ago price, and it's all going to be gone because there's going to be no ammo because current market value is way higher, or you're going to have the price gougers at the show selling their ammo at current market value and everyone's gonna be mad at them. This scenario, there's going to be ammo at the gun show that you can actually buy if you really need it. This scenario, there is no ammo at the show because it's all sold out. So it's, it's just a question of which one you want. It's just simple economics. Number two, lack of people actually selling guns. Now the second thing that he mentions is that there's too many non-gun vendors at the gun shows. And I agree uh, that the, I, I feel you there, there really is. And I would say if, if there's like 5% of the gun show or 10% of the gun show tables are to non-gun vendors, that's probably too much. Um, right now, I, I, that last show, it really felt like 60, 40, something like that. Now he, in his video, he says there's like only 10 or 15% of the tables at the show were gun related. I think that was a bit of an exaggeration. I can understand why it feels that way. You know, if you pay 12 bucks to get into a place to see guns, you go into a gun show, you wanna see guns, and you know, there's not that much stuff really, then yeah, I get that it would feel that way. Now there's a combination of factors that really go into that. Um, the rumor was that that show was at 50 vendors canceled before that show. So there's a lot of empty tables. When that kind of thing happens, what happens is the current vendors, they just kind of spread their stuff out. Um, and that just, a lot of times they'll bring like non-gun stuff, junk, whatever, just to kind of fill up those empty tables because the empty tables don't really look good at a gun show. So they just kind of fill it up with whatever they have. And that kind of furthers the impression that there's not that many guns there. Well, I think they'll just sell tables to anybody. So the thing about the RK show is that yes, he will sell tables to non-gun vendors. You know, it's, it's not just about making as much money as possible, which is necessary if you want to keep gun shows alive. But also, it's, he charges a premium for those non-gun vendors. So typically, if you're a gun vendor, it's $71 a table if you prepay. Uh, it's $100 if you are a non-gun gun, non -gun vendor. So it's an extra $30 a table, which might not sound like a lot, but if you have to buy you know, 10 tables, 
you're talking about like you're an extra three hundred dollars if you're a non-gun seller at a gun show and it's one of those things where the gun shows are encouraged to kind of have the highest table counts as possible you know it looks good if a show can advertise and say you know we have 500 tables and a thousand tables you know that kind of thing so they're kind of encouraged to say that it's a big show because if it was only gun vendors it would be a tiny little show and there are shows just like that there's little military and collector shows that are just tiny little niche shows. So yeah, this last one kind of sucked, but it's really just kind of a perfect storm of factors that just this last particular show sucked. It doesn't mean that they all suck. You shouldn't give up on them just because you see one gun show. Go to a different gun show. I mean, there's different companies that do different gun shows just at that one location at KCI. I think there's like two or three different companies that rent out that space and hold gun shows. Um, so go to a show at that same place that's at a different company or go to another show at a different city, do something like that. Don't just flat out give up on shows. Number three, lack of product. This is weird time. Stuff is sold out everywhere. Ammo sold out. There's ammo vendors at that show that I've seen for years at past shows just be stocked to the brim of all this ammo. And I walk by their tables and they have hardly anything. And that's just because people are buying it. There's stuff is selling to the point that it's hard for vendors to get stuff in. It's just, some of the people I talked to, they just said, yeah, we can't get ammo. We're, we're back ordered thousands of dollars of ammo. We just can't get it. This is all the ammo that we have for sale. So, you know, like I said before, it's a perfect storm of circumstances that's leading to just sort of the lack of products and just kind of a not a very good looking show. Number four, this underlying negative energy and anxiety among the people there. So the fourth thing that he talks about is the anxiety and negativity that he experienced uh, from the show. Um, you know, perception is reality. I don't know, you know, what he went through, if there's any things, you know, that happened to him at the show that sort of made him just perceive the whole show as being either negative or gloomy. You know, um, we are kind of in record high unemployment during a pandemic, uh, during a time when everything is hard to get and a lot of people are laid off. Like, there's a lot of things going on right now and I don't think you should just blame gun shows for it. I think you just sort of see the reflection of it, you know, in gun shows. And I think like the fact that everyone, you know, is walking around in masks and you can't see each other's face and facial expressions. I think that adds a lot to the negativity. So, you know, I think a lot of that is sort of personal. To me, the gun show didn't feel any different than all the other gun shows I, gun I go to. You know, you see a lot of the same people, same types of people, you know, it's it's... It's just people are people, but I still think that in on average, people are a lot more polite at gun shows than they are kind of typically anywhere else. I mean, you could bump into somebody at Walmart and bump into somebody at gun show, you know, and see which one turns out the best. It's, uh, you know, I don't, gun show people typically aren't that bad. So I, but perception is reality. If you feel that way, I can't say that you didn't feel that way. Finally, number five, there's no negotiating. Now, I think that comes down to sort of two things. I, bet, I think it is sort of just his own in, in perception of the show. Maybe he tried to make a deal with a few people or a couple of people or whatever, and everyone just said no. Maybe the prices he offered were well under market value, and they just said, you know, heck no. Um, some vendors, they won't deal with you at all just the way you ask a question. I know vendors that if you ask them like, hey, what's your best price on that? They'll just be like, yeah, no. They just, they don't want to put up with it. They don't want to deal all the... You know, some of these people, they're not really salespeople. They don't want to deal with the hassle of negotiating and whatever. They just slap a price on it, and some people are just that way. Others, if you ask them nicely, like, hey, could you take a couple dollars off that if I pay cash? Some of those people are very happy to do that. Now, they're, they're not going to do it for free. They're not going to give stuff away. And like I said before, the market value on all this stuff is crazy, and it's really hard for the vendors to get in stuff. It's hard for vendors to get in, you know, Glocks and you know, a lot of AR brands and pistols. And if it's hard for them to get it in, they're not gonna want to negotiate because they can't replace it. If they, if they sell something, if they discount something, they won't be able to replace that down the road as easily as they used to be. So therefore, they're just not gonna be as open to negotiate as before. So yeah, you probably have a point on this one, but then again, I negotiate all the time at shows. I mean, at that same exact show, at the same exact weekend, um, I was able to negotiate uh, with this guy, this really sweet uh, Swedish carbine. I mean, there are deals there. You can do deals, do some horse trading, you know, and find good stuff that way. Um, I think a lot of times with gun shows, 
you get out of it what you put into the shows. So I'd like to know what you guys think of this topic. I know this is kind of a heated topic and it just, it, this literally hits home for me because you know, that gun show at, at KCI, KCI is like eight minutes from my house. It's my favorite gun show because of how you know quick and easy it is for me to get there. Um, I've gotten a lot of really good deals from that exact show in the past. I mean, I got uh, the 38H there, the Steyr Han there, the P38 there, my Luger there, um, and my Radom there. Like there's, there's a lot of good deals to be had there. Um, if you just, if you go often, maybe you bring some stuff to do a little bit of horse trading, you get there early. Um, I mean, it is possible. I just, you should not go just because you think it's gonna be bad. But honestly, I'm, I'm saying for you to go at a detriment of my own because I mean, it works out for me, like the less people that go, because then there's less competition for me. So I'm not saying this out of any, you know, personal interest or anything like that. So this is kind of a long rambly video. I didn't mean it to be that way, but thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.